Hi there, my name is Derek. I'm going to give you a quick tour of the Anomalism Management Framework for Virtual Machines. Uh, let's just log right in, jump in with both feet. So when you first log into Anomalism, you see the dashboard. The dashboard has a transaction monitor, which lists currently running jobs, of which right now obviously are none. And then pluggable panes, where you can put whatever content you want, or even your own external data sources. In this case, we've got a process list that shows us the load on our PyCalculus test cluster on EC2. Uh, all these parts can be turned off and removed. Uh, you can refresh, get uh, new information. And this is, of course, affected by the jobs we're going to be performing in a moment inside of the virtual infrastructure management pane. This is where everything happens inside of Anomalism. Now, what we're looking at right now is a list of clusters, which are available, which contain both physical and virtual machines. And then the machine view, which right now isn't showing anything. So to get a list of the machines, we're going to click on the default cluster. This is a list of all the machines in this cluster currently running. In this cluster we have two physical machines, Anomalism Mini 1 and CAS Mini 2. These are two Mac Mini Intel VT capable machines. Uh, each one's got 2 gigs of RAM and 80 gigs of hard drive space. Fairly modest equipment but ample for doing this demo. Uh, we've also got three vi uh, virtual machines. Uh, we've got uh, a couple here that are located on Anomalism Mini 1. These are both KVM machines. And then we've got another one right here, which is running on CAS Mini 2 remotely. If we want to get more information about any given machine, we can actually pop open our editor tab, and this gives us a whole set of tasks we can perform. Adding hypervisors to this machine if it's got virtualization running on it, uh, editing its IP addresses, editing its cluster memberships, which is all really easy to do. Uh, and of course, we can start, stop, reboot, store, uh, perform a variety of tasks on these machines, including VNCing and remotely to view the desktop. We can close that right back up again like that. And if we want to change the state or if we want to refresh the view, you can either click the blue circle, which refreshes the entire set of machines, or if you just want a single machine to refresh, you can just click this little guy right here and that'll refresh that single view. If we want to select different clusters, we can just click in the left hand pane and that'll bring up different lists of machines. Any machine can belong to any number of clusters, and uh, belonging to uh, any one cluster doesn't prevent you from putting in a different one. So if you want to reuse the same machines for different tasks, you can put them in the different clusters which pertain to those tasks. For example, you might have a Elastic Live cluster, which is used to provide uh, our functionality to external clusters or to external users, and also we've got an EC2 cluster which is a set of jobs that are going to be running on EC2. Now, we haven't put any machines in here yet, but we'll give that uh, a demo later on. The next important part of Anomalism is the Elastic Valet, and this is where you actually start machines off. Elastic Valet takes a look at your currently running physical machines and your current capacity and decides where to put the virtual machines you want to provision. What that means is you don't have to go into the individual physical machines and manually balance out the load. You can just provision machines and they'll go where the load is the lowest. On top of that, it's trivially easy to write new plugins for Valet. So you can write rules which uh, query web services, uh, run Python code, run shell scripts. Uh, you can even integrate with Windows to perform Valet uh, provisioning tasks to make sure that you get your machines put exactly where you want them to go. So in this case, I'm going to provision a few new machines. I'm going to put them in our default cluster because we've only got a couple machines on this cluster. Uh, I'm going to use the Gutsy KVM because it's a fairly small uh, KVM based Ubuntu uh, distro. And I'm going to provision, say, three machines. And I'm going to put these in the new Elastic Live cluster because we haven't got anything in there yet. And I click on provision. So a little window popped up very quickly there to show you that something was actually happening. And the top right corner here, the provisioned message showed up. So that means that our job just went ahead and worked and we didn't have any fatal errors. If we go back over to the dashboard again, that'll refresh and show us that in fact out of the three potential machines, two of them provisioned. And the reason for that is I've got a rule that says no provisioning more than one machine per physical host at a time. That just prevents us from over provisioning and loading up our machines to the point where they fall down. If we go back into the virtual infrastructure and click on the infrastructure tab, and then go back into the Elastic Live cluster, we'll see that two machines are locked and currently provisioning. Now these machines will be unavailable to us until the provisioning job finishes. While we're waiting for these jobs to provision, let's go take a look at the repository. Using an RSS-based protocol, we're able to provide lists of virtual machines and modules which plug into Anomalism to extend its functionality. 
We provide two feeds by default, along with a beta feed, which you can find more information about in the wiki. Uh, the first feed is the VMcast Appliances, which is a list of virtual machine images, which you can provision on your cluster. And the second one is a set of modules. Modules plug into Anomalism and provide more functionality. So if you have modules which are, uh, are exposed through an external RSS feed by your developers, or if you just want to make use of the modules we've developed in-house, you can just point your browser at this address and get a list of them. And if you think you like what you see, you just add them in by entering the URL here in the Add New Repository pane. Simply click Add, and now all those machines are now available to you to use. Clicking on Remote Repository, we see a list of all the external plugins that are available to us. We can filter by their type, so we can just look at modules, or we can just look at virtual machines. And adding them to our local repository is as simple as clicking on the plus button to download them and place them in our repo. Our local repo page lists the machines we have currently installed and ready to provision. In this case, just Geos Gutsy KVM, which is an Ubuntu-based, uh, very lightweight virtualization uh, operating system, and an older version of CentOS 4.6, which I use internally for testing. So going back to virtual infrastructure again, we can see that one of the machines is finished provisioning, so we can start it. Absolutely, I am sure. So now this machine is started and ready to use. We can SSH into it, or use the VNC console to control it and it's ready to perform jobs. If we want to give it a more meaningful name, we can just edit that name here, and rename it, and there we go. Reloading the cluster will show us the renamed machine, and the other one's finished now, so we'll start it up too. So these machines are located on two separate physical hosts, Mini 1 and Mini 2. Uh, they're in the same room, but their only communication protocols are NFS and HTTP. So there's not a lot of infrastructure to set up. Anomalism can be installed in a matter of minutes on most uh, reasonably equipped machines. So let's go over to some of the other panes. I'll give you a quick tour. So in the administration pane, you can see that we've got some unusual items. First of all, we've got a Drupal CMS. So the administration pane is a pluggable area. You can add more features uh, easily just by writing HTML and a one-line Python code in a module to plug it in. So any kind of application, Alfresco for uh, asset management, or JBPM rules which get plugged into Valet for deciding where machines get provisioned, can be plugged into this pane. One of the included applications is a config editor, which lets you edit the virtual uh, machine ap applications which are plugged into Anomalism. As you can see, we've gotten it installed, so you can't do any right now. In the next tab, we've got user and group management. We can create new users using an easy interface create new groups, or edit their permissions. Permission editing is really interesting. Everything's extremely granular in Anomalism. All rules are access control lists, and every single permission, create, read, update, and delete, can be applied to any object for any user or group in the system. Selecting on any one of the users gives me a large list of potential, uh, potential objects to apply permissions to. This gets a little unwieldy to go through, but that's okay, because we can just filter them quickly and easily to select exactly what we want to drill down to permission. The tabs on the top of the interface are also pluggable. The monitoring tab actually shows a Ganglia monitoring system, which is not part of the Anomalism framework at all. In fact, it runs on an external virtual machine. Many applications get packaged uh, as virtual machines instead of part of the Anomalism code core, which means you can offload heavy computing tasks on an external uh, server which doesn't depend on the computing power on your uh, front-end servers. So you can have front-end servers which host the web application uh, for Anomalism, and those servers won't be impacted by uh, heavy monitoring or external jobs because all they do is just the web service. And then they use web services on the remote hosts to actually start stop control machines. And that pretty much ties up the tour of Anomalism. If you have any questions, please contact Anomaly at uh, I guess sales at anomaly.com and thanks for taking the time for this tour.